This segment is devoted to an exploration of exciting new developments in joint replacement of the hip and knee. These include more reliable techniques for pain-free early recovery from surgery, new wear-resistant plastics, the emerging roles of robots and computer navigation systems, and a more mature understanding of the advantages and disadvantages of anterior versus posterior surgical approaches and minimally invasive techniques. First, let's address one of the most important concerns of any patient who is about to have a hip or knee replacement. How much pain will there be after the surgery? A multimodal approach, including several oral agents begun before the surgery, spinal anesthesia with morphine crystals into the spinal fluid, peripheral nerve injections, and injection of multiple drugs into the wound during surgery results in virtual elimination of all pain in the first 24 hours after surgery. This elimination of pain in the first 24 hours after hip and knee surgery has been one of the biggest advances in the last 10 years. It facilitates rapid recovery of walking, early discharge from the hospital, and even performance of the surgery on an outpatient basis in some circumstances. Though we are doing much better than 10 years ago, protocols for maintaining this pain-free status for several weeks are not as reliable as those for the first 24 hours. How to extend the pain-free status beyond the first 24 hours is the next goal of research in this area. Now let's talk about the remarkable new plastics. Wearing out of hip and knee devices results in damage to surrounding bone and joint tissues and the recurrence of pain and limp. A revision surgery then becomes necessary. This is a much bigger operation than the initial one and has a more protracted recovery. Preventing the need for that revision has been the goal of research on new bearing surfaces, such as ceramic on ceramic, metal on metal, and improved plastic for the most commonly used technique of metal on plastic. There is now data that radiation of the plastic in oxygen-free air produces a very favorable change in the material that eliminates virtually all wear particles. Several recent presentations of long-term follow-up studies of this plastic have demonstrated 100% success at 10 years after hip surgery in carefully followed human patients. The success of this new generation of plastics is so impressive that more than 80% of all hips in the U.S. are now being done with this material, and the use of metal on metal has dropped from about 60% of cases to less than 5% over the past two years alone. The results of ceramic on ceramic are quite good also, but can be associated with squeaking or in rare circumstances, fracture of the ceramic material. The plastic allows use of larger diameter balls with reduced risk of dislocation and permits more patients to return to moderately strenuous activities such as downhill skiing, surfing, water skiing, tennis, and weight training. What about robotics and navigation? A computer-controlled robot was first used in human hip surgery by Dr. Bill Barger in Sacramento in 1992 and was written up on the front page of the Wall Street Journal. We've come a long way in the following 20 years, and optical tracking navigation systems are widely used in total knee surgery now to help to improve the accuracy of alignment and positioning of the devices on the bones. Haptic technology can create a window of safety beyond which a sharp instrument or saw cannot go and guide the precise creation of the position of a knee or hip prosthesis. The downsides of this technology are significant too. The expense is great, more time is required for the surgery, and the true value of the extra effort can be hard to demonstrate compared to traditional surgery by an experienced surgeon. The Mako haptic device costs more than $1 million for one machine, and it will become increasingly more difficult to justify these enhancements in an era of diminishing resources. What about anterior versus posterior hip surgery? The latest research demonstrates no difference in outcomes at one or two years after hip surgery done by the anterior or the posterior approach. The anterior approach is associated with a faster recovery time, but at the price of a higher risk of fracture of the femur, malposition of the device, an unsightly scar, and a high incidence of numbness of the skin of the thigh. Especially important for women patients, the scar of the posterior approach is cosmetic and barely visible at one year. What about tiny incisions? A decade ago, promotion of total hip and total knee through tiny incisions or two small incisions was the rage. Was this marketing by surgeons or a meaningful advance? Suffice it to say that two incision total hip is rarely done anymore 
after research at the Mayo Clinic demonstrated major injury to muscles with lasting negative impact. The really important gains have come from the near elimination of pain from the surgery and a revolution in rapid rehabilitation from surgery. We have gone from a time when patients were in the hospital for 14 days in the 1970s to a time when patients can walk on the day of their surgery. There has never been a better time to be a patient with disabling arthritis. The surgery is effective, safe, and nearly pain-free. America leads the world in biomedical innovation, and this is particularly true in the areas of hip and knee surgery.